our presenter take it. All righty. Good morning, everyone. I see a lot of familiar faces from yesterday and Monday. Can I just get a thumbs up on your camera if you can hear me okay? I'm seeing a lot of the places where we're coming in from are still coming in Baltimore, Maryland. Awesome. Thank you guys for the thumbs up. So it is our animal week. We have been talking a lot about animals that you might see at the zoo. I said I chose specifically animals from the Lehigh Valley Zoo because I am tuning in from the Lehigh Valley. Um, that is where I live as a teacher at our school. So I am curious to see what my friends remember from yesterday. And if you are a friend who is just joining us today, that's all right. We will kind of catch you up to what we talked about. Can anyone type in the chat, what two animals did we talk about yesterday? We've been on a trend of two a day so far. Okay, we talked about snowy owls and penguins. You got it. Oh, now I'm really gonna, oh, and I like how people put African penguins. You are right, very specific. Now I'm gonna really quiz you. Can anyone remember and think back to Monday what we talked about? So yesterday was snowy owls and African penguins. But what did we talk about? Um, okay, Gabrielle has got it. We talked about the white cockatoo. And the bald eagle, you got it. Nice job, you guys. Alrighty, so we're gonna stick with that trend. We are gonna talk about two new animals today. Um, now, before we do that though, I know we kind of left off with our craft. Some friends got to finish the snowy owl. Some friends got started with me, but didn't quite finish yet. And I know some friends were just getting their materials ready. So, what I'm going to do, since only part of how to make the snowy owl is in our recording from yesterday, we're going to finish it off on the recording today. So if you are a friend who did not get a chance to finish yesterday, we're not going to spend too much time on this because I do want to talk about our two new animals, but I do want to get us a little caught up. So this was our final product, right? We were trying to make our snowy owl. We used our hand prints. We got pretty far in it. So we ended up doing all the facial features of the owl, right? We got the eyes down, the beak, the feet, the ears, we colored them in. And then we also got to trace our hands. And I said, if you have a sibling with you, it would be awesome if they could help you out too. So what you have to do next is you are gonna wanna use your scissors to actually cut out those pieces as well as you can along the lines. I know it's a little hard to cut out your hands because it's so curvy, but just do your best. Um, once you cut those out, again, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this and do it in live time, but I do wanna at least tell you guys the steps. Once you cut those out, that's when you begin to paste them on your paper plate or your white paper circle. You can see that I did my hands as the wings. So I just put some glue right on the back piece of the hand and stuck it to the back of the shape. And then the little feet I put right at the bottom. I put the nose kind of in the center of the plate. And then to really make it look like an owl, I used my gray marker that we were using yesterday. And you almost do like an ice cream cone shape coming up from the nose. And you go all the way around the top of the head. And I colored that in gray. And then the eyes that we already colored just go right in that gray area then. And then the ears go right on top. So once you have those pieces colored, we really did the hard part yesterday. Yes, you. <laughs> some friends did say it looked like Hedwig if you're a Harry Potter fan, the snowy owl. And then just to give it a little bit more detail, all I did was I took the gray marker and let me hold it a little closer. You can see I kind of just drew little like um, almost like little um, curves here so that they were the feathers to give it some detail. So I know some friends, like I said, finished this yesterday. Does anybody have theirs that they wanna hold up and show friends? I know we have some new teachers in here. We have some uh, new campers with us. So does anybody wanna show theirs off if it's near you? Some friends may already have it hanging up on a wall. Oh, there's Mezzy's awesome. There's Williams, they look so nice. 
Oh, I love it. Very cute. Alrighty, so you guys can actually hold on to those. We'll put them off to the side. Friends who are still working, that's okay. Now you do have the next steps in the recording. So if you do have to come back and watch it, that is a-okay. I am gonna screen share here with you guys so that we can take a look at this together because we have two new animals for today. So I'm looking for friends. Can you guys still hear me okay? Yes, okay. I know it gets a little funky once I start screen sharing. So here's a picture of our two new animals. I actually found a picture with both of them in it, which is pretty exciting. Type in the chat. These ones are kind of easy. Type in the chat if you know what these two animals are. Okay, William's got one. Zebra. Yeah, Aiden's got it. Excellent, Vincent. Oh, look at all these answers coming in. Yes, we're going to talk about the zebra and the giraffe. Now, there are different kinds of zebras and different kinds of giraffes. So we are going to actually talk about specific kinds, again, that you would see at the Lehigh Valley Zoo. But I'm curious, has anyone ever gone to a zoo and saw a zebra or a giraffe there? I know some friends were saying they've never been to a zoo before, which is okay. It's kind of cool that we're doing Animal Week this week. So Gabriella has, Vincent said it when he was young, so maybe it was a little while ago. Very cool, I'm seeing some thumbs up, some raised hands, awesome. So we are actually gonna start with some zebra facts. Zebra facts, specifically the kind that's at the Lehigh Valley Zoo is called the Grant Zebra. Some facts about them are that their black and white stripes make them difficult to see in light and dark shadow patterns of the grassland. So zebras typically live in a grassland. That's their habitat. Now, again, why do you think they'd want to blend in with their stripes? It says their black and white stripes make them difficult to see. Ooh, William said to hide. Gabriella said lions. Yeah, because they can be prey, right? So they want to hide so that other animals can't find them. I would think that stripes on a zebra would stick out like a sore thumb, but I guess not. I guess it just depends on day or night. They do prefer, prefer to live in savanna woodlands and grasslands. They eat grass, leaves, barks, and shrubs, so they usually eat more plant-like things. And they are social creatures that frequently change herds. Now, there's a vocabulary word there. Does anybody know what a herd is? What does it mean if they're in a herd? Yeah, there's like a group of them. Nice job, you guys. So they like to change the group they're in. Interesting. So they must be pretty social animals, I would say then. So here are some pictures of the Grant Zebra that were from the Lehigh Valley Zoo. So you guys can see their stripes. Look how they're kind of like very bold. I would almost think that they wouldn't be camouflaged very well but I guess they're out in the open at the zoo. It might depend on the grassland and the time of day. But there is a picture. And now we are actually gonna pause there, my friends, and we are gonna play a little game here. We're gonna play Guess That Animal. So I'm gonna show you some animal skin or fur on the screen, and I want you guys to type in the chat, what type of animal do you think it is? I'm seeing a lot of friends saying snake. Ooh, and I know we're going to get to see some snakes later today. So friends are already recognizing the skin. Awesome. Yes, a lot of friends are saying snake. And you guys are correct. The answer is a snake. All right, are we ready for the next one? Let's see how many we can get. You guys should keep score for yourselves. Ooh, this one's a little trickier. What animal do you think this is? Ooh, okay, some people said sheep, lion, camel, a bear, lots of different answers. Give us a few more, ooh, a yak. <laughs> A few more seconds to type in our answer. 
a llama, sheep, buffalo. That one's a different one. All right, are we ready for the reveal? Been seeing a lot of different answers. We all agreed on the snake, but there's a lot of different answers for this one. Let's see. It is a llama. And some of you guys got that. That was very impressive. Now, some of these animals that we're uh, showing right now, they can be in zoos. Others aren't. You might find more so in nature. It just depends on where you live. All right. Are we ready for the next one? Ooh, this one's kind of easy. What animal do you think this is? <laughs> Somebody said super fluffy. Llamas do look super fluffy. Ooh, lots of people are saying zebra, which this one's easy because it's fresh in our mind, right? We just talked about the Grant zebra. Just like Marty from Madagascar. Love that movie. All right. Let's see. It is a zebra. You guys got it. Easy peas, lemon squeeze. Okay, let's go to the next one. Ooh, this one is a little tougher. What do we think this is? Some horse, raccoon, goat, cow, dog, hare, a horse. Oh my goodness, a goat. You guys are giving really good answers here. Lots are saying cow. All right, we'll give our friends a few more seconds to type in their answers and then we're gonna do the big reveal. All right, let's see what it is. It was a go. I can't believe some friends guessed that. So if you guess go, Give yourself another point. <laughs> awesome job. All right, let's move on to our next animal here. Ooh, what about this one? This one might seem easy, but it's a little tricky. Some ones are saying cheetah, jaguar, tiger, leopard. Ooh, some ones said leopard or a cheetah, jaguar. Yeah, sometimes those animals' furs look very similar. Could be a cheetah. Cheetos. <laughs> All right, let's see. This one was a jaguar. So I actually thought this one was cheetah fur when I first saw it. So anybody who said cheetah, I was in the same boat as you guys. It was a jaguar. All righty, those friends who got that, give yourselves a pat on the back. Nice job, let's go to our next one. Ooh, what about this fur? What are we thinking for this one? A bunny, a fawn, deer, porcupine, hedgehog. Okay, these are very different answers, horse. Hmm, okay, I'm getting a lot of different answers for this one. Take a few more seconds to put in your final answer, antelope. Oh, I like when we get tougher ones in this because we get a lot of different answers. All right, here we go. It is a deer, it was a deer. I did not know that one when I first saw it. Nice job, friends. I hope you're giving yourselves high fives or pats on the back or brain kisses for being so smart. All right, we're going to move on to the next one. Are we ready? Oh, what about this animal? What is this animal? Oh, lots of friends saying giraffe. <laughs> I think a lot of friends are agreeing that this is a giraffe. 
I haven't seen any other answers yet, so let's do the reveal. It is a giraffe. <laughs> you got it. Nice job, you guys. So it's super easy. Yeah, that one was pretty. That one and the zebra are really easy. Those are the two animals that we were focusing on today. Ooh, what about this one? Hmm. Ooh, some friends are saying panda. Some friends are saying skunk. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, those colors are a really big clue, right? The black and white. All right, I'm seeing panda is a very popular answer, but I did see some skunks thrown in there. Ooh, somebody thinks a hog maybe. Oh, somebody else said a zebra. Maybe like a closer up picture of the zebra fur. All right, let's see what it is. It's a panda. <laughs> I feel like pandas are very rare in zoos. Has anybody ever seen a panda in a zoo? Give me a thumbs up if you've seen a panda. Oh, Vincent has. Ooh, some of my friends have. The only time I ever saw a panda in the zoo, like they are not at the Lehigh Valley Zoo. I actually was in California and I went to the San Diego Zoo. I don't know if any of you guys have ever been there, especially some of our friends who aren't from Pennsylvania. But they were really cool to see in person. Awesome. So maybe they have them in some zoos near you. I feel like pandas, it's either a hit or a miss, depending on what zoo you're at. All righty, you guys. Let's take a look at this fur. This one's tricky. Hmm. I'm curious to see what some of us think this one is. Ooh, somebody said a rhino. Ooh, a koala. Okay, so we got rhino, koala. Ooh, somebody said a horse or a seal, maybe. I'm seeing skunk. Wow, sloth. Okay. Donkey, gorilla, koala. Wow, we have a wide variety of answers for this one. Elephant, rhino. All right, let's see what it is. It's a seal. <laughs> Some friends' faces are, oh. <laughs> yeah, that one was tricky. And it says, what? <laughs> that one was a seal. Seal are so cute. All right, you guys, so we are going to pause there. I'll tell you what, you guys did a really nice job. Did anybody get all of those? Some of them were tough. Maybe some friends got a few. Yeah, I was going to say, everybody gets a round of applause. You guys all did a nice job participating and joining in and playing. So, excellent. You got around half eight, and that's really good, though. Awesome. Well, I'm so happy you guys had fun with that and participated. So, we're actually going to continue the riddles a little bit here. Instead of looking at animal fur and their skin, they're going to give us animal clues and our job, oops, let me get out of this for a second. Our job is to guess what animal it is. So this is kind of like part of our little mini brain break here. We're about halfway through. So I'm going to make this nice and big. You guys will not be able to hear audio from the video because I'm actually going to read our clues for us. Okay, so I'm going to make this big so you guys can see it. If you think you know the animal that is being described, I want you to type it in the chat. You have to listen carefully to these clues. Here we go. Okay, it says, I have eight legs, I eat insects, and I sometimes spin webs. What animal am I? Oh, lots of friends got it. Uh, so I'm going to pause here. 
depending on what you said is the workout you have to do. So we are moving and grooving for this. That's what brain breaks are all about, right? So if you think it's a scorpion, they want you to lay flat on your back and do reach up to the sky and do touches. If you think it's a spider, they want you to do like punch, punch, alternating punches. And if you think it's a beetle, they want you to do a side plank. So let's see what everybody thinks it is. I'm going to do punches because I think it's a spider too. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Seen a lot of punches out there. Let's see. Give us a lot of time to do this exercise too. <gasps> one, it's a spider. Those friends get one point. Nice job. All right, let's see what the next animal is. I like to lie in the sun. I have a loud roar and I have a mane. Ooh. So if you think it's a leopard, you're going to be, looks like you're dabbing. <laughs> if you think it's a warthog, you're playing the air guitar. And if you think it's a lion, you're going to do the floss. I know you guys know some of these dances. So what do you think it is? It was the lion. So we were flossing, you got it. All right, let's see what's up next here. I'm awake at night, so that means they're nocturnal. I hunt small animals and I can't move my eyes. <gasps> if it's an owl, you want to do a jump squat. If it's it's a bat you want to do jump side to side and if it's a moth we're kind of swaying side to side like this now i hope you guys know this answer let's see what it is oh man some friends are getting a good workout in right now it's a owl friends we talked about that one yesterday remember they can't move they don't have good eye muscles so they can't move their eyes you have to turn their head that was a big clue Okay, this one says, I swing from tree to tree, I groom my friends, and I have a long tail. If it's a monkey, we're doing this dance. If it's a gorilla, we're doing jump squats, touch the ground. If it's a sloth, we're flossing again. They must really like the floss dance. So what are we thinking? I swing from tree to tree, I groom my friends, and I have a long tail. I'm going to do this one. I'm thinking it's a monkey. So I'm doing this dance. It is a monkey. All right. Okay, let's see what's next. Ooh, I like to slide on my belly. I eat small fish and I wear a tuxedo. If it's a polar bear, we're doing crunches. If it's a penguin, we're doing push ups. So, man, we're getting some arm muscles in. And if it's a seal, you're doing high knees. What do you guys think it is? <laughs> I like to slide on my belly. I eat small fish and I wear a tuxedo. Yeah, it's a pet. Another animal we talked about this week, right? And we talked about their diet, how they like to eat fish. All righty, this one says, I have giant ears, I have a long nose, and I'm the largest land animal. Something's tricky. If it's a giraffe, you're doing kind of like a crisscross plank. If it's an anteater, you're doing jump squats. And if it's an elephant, you're doing back like donkey kicks. What do we think? I have giant ears. I have a long nose and I'm the largest land animal. It's an elephant. I see some friends are typing their answers in the chat too. Awesome. All right. This one says, I can detach my tail. I eat insects and I am cold blooded. Ooh, detach their tail. They can take their tail off. Is it a lizard? Do squats. If it's a possum, do leg kicks. And if it's a crab, oh my goodness, what dance move is that? <laughs> I think that one's from a video game. Which one are we thinking? I can detach my tail, I eat insects, and I am cold-blooded. 
It is a lizard. I didn't know lizards could detach their tails. Interesting. All right, I live in the water. I need air to survive. And I talk by whistling. If it's a walrus, we're kind of doing this dance. If it's an octopus, we're doing like the funky monkey. And if it's a dolphin, we're doing sidekicks. So I live in the water. I need air to survive. And I talk by whistling. I see Micah's got it. Nice job. Oh, I think Tristan and Grayson got it too. It is a dolphin. <laughs> okay, I believe we only have a few more left. This one says, I live underground. I have perfect hearing and I hop around. What am I? If it's a mole, we're doing push-ups. If it's a rabbit, we're doing like Frankenstein kicks. And if it's a deer, we're doing the big rainbow. We're going all the way over and all the way back. So I live underground. I have perfect hearing and I hop around. Ooh. It's a rabbit. They must have good hearing. They got big ears. All righty. This one says, I live in a den. I am good at fishing and I like to live alone. Hmm. If it's a wolf, we're doing this dance. If it's a bear, we're doing this dance. And if it's a sloth, we're doing the wave. What animal do we think it is? Ooh, getting lots of bears as an answer. Seen a lot of bear dance moves. Awesome job, guys. Let's see what animal it is. It's a bear. You guys are really good at this. Yay, and that is the end. You guys did it. Phew, take a breather if you were doing those exercises. I saw friends, some friends standing up and jumping around. You guys gotta be tired. That was awesome though. Alrighty, you guys, so we are going to move on here and talk about our next animal of the day, which we said was a giraffe, right? So some giraffe facts are that a giraffe's neck, now this one's crazy, a giraffe's neck, just their neck alone, can be up to six and a half feet long. But it has the same number of vertebrae as a person's neck. That's crazy. So a giraffe's neck alone is like a foot and a half taller than Miss Anjak. It's a lot taller than a lot of people you probably know. But it has the same number of vertebrae as my neck. So I have the same number of vertebrae as a giraffe. And look how tiny my neck is. Weird, right? Let's see. It says their tongue can be over 18 inches long. So if you guys ever go to the Lehigh Valley Zoo, you can actually feed the giraffe there. So they give you a like a leaf to hold and you can go up. You have to go up on this really high deck and you hold out the leaf and the giraffe will come over and he wraps his tongue like around your hand and he sucks the leaf in his mouth. It's quite the experience. But their tongues, whoops, it jumped ahead here on me. Their tongues are 18 inches long. So that's longer than a ruler. They can stand 30 minutes after they are born. So can we do that as humans? Absolutely not, right? <laughs> we take time. We sometimes, well, we have to learn how to like just move our head first, right? And then sometimes we roll over as babies. Eventually we start crawling. Then we start standing. It's quite a process for us. But giraffes, it's only 30 minutes and then they can stand up. So that's pretty incredible too. They only eat plants. So they are plant eaters and giraffes are very social animals. They roam in groups called towers, which we did learn about from that story we listened to on the very first day, right? A group of giraffes is called a tower, which is kind of funny because they're so tall and towers are tall. I wonder if that's the reason why. But they are social animals, just like how our zebra are. Our zebra like to change herds. Well, so do our giraffe. They like to roam in different towers. 
Now, here are some pictures from the Lehigh Valley Zoo that we have. So if you guys look, this is actually where the feeding happens. So see how the people have to go up on this really tall deck. So you're actually as tall as the giraffe. And the giraffe knows to come on over and he knows he's going to get a snack. Nice little treat. And then all you do is hold out your hand and he sucks up the leaf. But this was a really cool picture here that I wanted to show you guys too, because this shows how tall a giraffe is compared to a human. So if you look, look at the baby crawling all the way down here at the bottom of the picture. They're like just over one foot tall. But look at a giraffe at birth. When a giraffe is born, it's already six feet tall. That's taller than most humans. Isn't that crazy? And then if you look here, this is like a like an average size adult, like five and a half feet. Look at the adult, or actually this is when they're only 1.5 years old. Look at the giraffe, it's all the way up to 11 feet tall. So they are very, very tall critters. So what are we doing today? You know, I always have two activities up my sleeve, my friends. We did the animal first. I actually have a giraffe craft we're going to do. Now, kind of similar to our snowy owl, we're probably not going to totally get to finish it today due to time. We'll see where we get to, but I at least want to get us started. And then whatever we don't get to, you guys can either do later in your own time, or I can briefly go over the steps at the beginning of our lesson tomorrow too. But we are going to go and do the giraffe. So if you guys look, I have a picture up on the screen, but I actually also made one as an example to show you guys. And I'm going to walk us through it step by step how I created this. So kind of similar to the owl, the snowy owl, all I need to get started right away is I'm going to actually use a paper plate. But if you guys don't have that, that's okay. You can take your piece of paper and just cut a circle out of it, right? That's kind of what a lot of friends were doing for the snowy owl yes, uh, yesterday too. Yeah, so Abby said, instead of paint, can I use markers? Absolutely. So some friends might not have paint. I'm going to be honest, friends. I only used yellow and brown paint. Um, I, the rest I actually did in marker. Like I did the eyes and the ears and the um, like the snout in markers. So I really just use paint for the base. If you guys don't have paint though, you can definitely just use markers or color pencils, but I'm going to show us how we're going to get started on this. So I'm actually going to get started drawing the faceful, facial features first. So is, as you guys can see here, see how I have, um, the ears here and I have the snout in the eyes. Those are the facial features we're gonna draw on our paper. Now, as you're drawing them, don't make them extremely big because otherwise they're not gonna fit on your paper plate. So how we do the snout is we're just gonna draw, it's kind of like an oval, just like this. Okay, so see how I did that oval? I didn't take up all of my paper because I wanna make sure it's gonna fit on my paper plate. So that's gonna kind of be like the giraffe snout area, the nose area. Next, I'm gonna do the eyes. The eyes are just two little ovals, but I'm gonna draw them like tall ways, like that. So you should just have kind of like three ovals on your paper right now. It's like a big one and then two smaller ones. And if you guys don't have the color yellow, that's totally fine. You could always build the body of the giraffe. And if you want to add color later, you can. Or you could just keep it black and white. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to draw the ears. So you want to make the ears, they almost look like a flower petal. Like if anybody's drawn a flower petal before, it's not quite an oval, but it kind of looks like this shape. Well, I guess it kind of is more. It's like a skinny oval. But you do want to draw them big enough so that you have room to poke them up off the edge of your paper plate. And then we have to do the final piece, which goes on the top of the giraffe's head. 
It is like a long rectangle with almost like a little circle at the top or like a half circle. So that's it. So you can kind of see as I was drawing it on my paper, I tried to keep it how I'm going to paste it on my paper plate too. I see some friends are already getting started on cutting even. So what we're actually going to do next though, friends, is we're going to use markers to color in the pieces we drew on the paper. I always like to color with markers before I cut because that way if I color outside of the lines, it's not really that big of a deal, right? Because we're just going to be cutting right around the edges. So I'm going to use my yellow marker to get started. The things that I'm coloring yellow is I'm going to color the big snout first. So let's color the big snout right where the nose and the mouth are going to go. And I'm going to color mine live right now with you guys. It's okay if you go outside of the lines because like I said, eventually we're going to cut these out, right? All righty. So this is what my big snout looks like all colored in. That's it. And then I'm going to move on. I'm going to skip the eyes. The eyes have no yellow in it. I know our allies did. But I'm going to go up to the ears now. So now I'm going to color in the ears I did. So here are the ears. And now the next part up at top here, friends, the rectangles, I'm actually going to color yellow. But then do you know how we did like a rectangle with a semicircle on the end? I'm going to color that semicircle part brown. So if you guys have brown with you, that's what we're going to color. Kind of like that semicircle on the end here. And I'm going to show you guys what I mean, just like that. So you can kind of see my colors are all coming together here. It's definitely starting to look a little bit more like a giraffe, right? The face of it. So once we're done with those, I'm going to cap my brown marker and I'm actually going to take my black one next. So if you guys have black, we're going to do the eyes. Now on my paper plate here, I kind of made my giraffe looking like off to the side. You can make your giraffe look straight ahead. You could do like, a, I don't know, like silly eyes with your giraffe. I'm probably just going to do what I did here. I'm going to make him look a little bit like off to the side. So I'm not coloring in the whole eye black. And... Voila, so that's what the eyes look like then. And then the nose part, we're going to do two little circles because that's going to be his nose. And then I'm just going to draw a big old smile on it. So voila, you can kind of see it's his face. All right, so I just did two little circles for his nose holes. And then I did a big smile on him. I got a happy giraffe. <laughs> all righty now we're gonna i'm i'm not gonna cut yet just in case we don't finish because i notice that sometimes when i personally cut out my pieces if i don't finish my craft today i lose my pieces <laughs> so i'm gonna keep them all on one sheet so it's easier for me to keep track of but i am gonna put them off to the side for now we're gonna focus on our paper plate next so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my paper plate here. Now I have paint. I just have washable Crayola paint. If you guys don't have that, you can use your crayon or marker or colored pencil, but we are going to color that whole plate yellow. So I'm actually going to get started on it because you can kind of see here, see how the whole background of his face is yellow. So I'm going to get started on that. And I have a little handy dandy paintbrush here. 
And as you guys are finishing up with making your plate yellow, just give me a thumbs up so I know where you're at. Especially for friends who might be painting, you might finish at the same time as me. So I can make sure we're on the same page. Okay, I'm not seeing any thumbs up yet. So friends must still be working. I am too. That's okay. Now, if you're painting a paper plate, it does get a little hard. The face part is easy, but around the edges is where it can get a little bit tricky. But just do your best. Okay, I'm just finishing up around my edges here. And you may or may not get some paint on your hands, friends, while you do this, if you're holding your paper plate. That's okay. Like I said, I'm actually using washable Crayola paint. So if you guys wash your hands, it should come right off. It just depends on the type of paint you're using if you are painting. Oh, I love how I can see some friends, what they're working on and what spot they're at right now. Oh, I like how I can see Spencer's actually doing his brown spots on there. Excellent. All right, let's see. All righty, friends. So I actually just finished painting the whole background of my giraffe. So let me show you where I'm at. It's okay if you're still working, but this is what mine looks like right now. So it's just a yellow paper plate. <laughs> That's it. And as you guys, if you guys can see Spencer's camera too, he's actually using crayons to color his that is definitely an option if you guys don't have paint now next part is the brown spot so if i hold up my finished product how in the world did i do these well friends it's paint again but guess what when i was making mine i didn't have brown paint in my pack so i had to mix some colors together to make brown does anyone know what colors you can mix together to make brown I had no brown. I had like black and white and I had two shades of blue. Okay, so some friends are saying green, red, every color. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I mixed red, blue, and yellow. And look what I got. Red, blue, and yellow gave me a nice color brown. And if I show it to you on my giraffe, it does look brown. So I'm actually going to use that again. Now, when I did the spots, you can use a paintbrush, but I used a little Q-tip. Those little things you use to clean your ears. I use those because they come in handy for arts and crafts too. And I painted wherever I wanted a spot. So I'm going to leave that up to you guys. But all I did was this. I just start in a corner and I make like a little squiggly shape. I didn't make it perfect circles. Because I feel like usually giraffes don't have perfect circle spots, right? So like there's one and then I'm going to dip my Q-tip in my paint again. Maybe I want to do one over here. So there's another one. Maybe I want to go down here. Hey, 
and maybe I want to put one up here. Up here is where like its little ears are going to go. You guys can put as many spots as you want on it. I might do another one here. Now, if you guys are using paint, this is going to be wet, right? So we want to definitely maybe put it somewhere, um, somewhere safe to dry. All right, so I'm actually just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to go too, too crazy with the spot. So if you guys look at mine. I just kind of stopped here. And it's okay if you do some in the middle of your paper plate. The snout is probably going to cover it once we cut it out. Like if you look here, see how my snout kind of covered this spot? That's okay. That might happen. Honestly, I kind of think that might look a little cooler. <laughs> so once you have that there, we're gonna put your paper plate actually off to the side to dry, especially if you were a friend using paint. If you were a friend who was not using paint, that's okay. We're still gonna put it off to the side because like I said, friends, we're actually gonna get to pick up with this tomorrow. So hold on to your pieces. The two pieces you should have are your painted plate or your colored plate, and then your sheet with all of your giraffe's facial features. Oh, Isaac's all finished. Yes, yeah, some of you guys may be done. Awesome, awesome. And again, if you guys want to work on this, oh, colored paper is a good idea, Gabriella. That saves a lot of coloring time, right? <laughs> and if you guys have a little bit of time later and you want to cut out your pieces, it's pretty easy to figure out where they're going to go on your giraffe plate, right? how the snout's gonna go in the middle, the ears are gonna be up top, the eyes are gonna be more towards the upper center. But since I did paint, I am gonna wait till mine dries to put on my pieces. So I'm gonna put these over to the side tomorrow, kind of like our snowy owl. If you guys finish it before then, that's okay. I'm gonna ask to see them tomorrow. So try to have them by your computer because I love to see our artwork we create. And then I will do the final steps tomorrow. All righty. All righty, friends. Awesome job today. That was so fun. Doing the guess what animal it is based on fur and skin. Doing our giraffes. Tomorrow we are going to do, in the first part of class, we are going to talk about two other animals. So I'll wait till re to reveal those until tomorrow. Um, we are going to take a little bit of a break here. Um, and then when we come back at 11 o'clock, we are going to get to see some snakes with Miss Brittany. All righty, friends. So go get a snack. Do a stretch. Do some exercises. Right? And we will see you guys in a little bit. Thanks, friends.